From the Thinkubator at the Tech Valley Center of Gravity, this is Steam Powered Saturday, a free monthly event where children ages 4 to 12 and their families are invited to visit us for a fun, creative, hands-on project. These mind-expanding projects help children discover creative play through science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. This month, we're discovering the art and mathematics behind Spirographs. Now, here's Jimmy. Hello, my name is Jimmy Tim Fry, and I am a teacher and an artist, and I'm here today to talk to you about Spirographs. We'll be talking about the math and the art behind them. So first, a Spirograph is a toy uh, used to draw intricate designs. It was invented by a world-renowned British engineer. His name was Denny's Fisher uh, at a toy fair in 1965. So you can buy Spirographs at stores, you can make them at home, and they're a lot of fun. But today, we'll be using a giant Spirograph and a giant pencil that was made by my friend Saul, who is an artist and a metal sculptor. So let's talk about the parts of a Spirograph. The Spirograph has a ring with teeth and a wheel with teeth. Notice that the ring has the teeth on the inside and the wheel has the teeth on the outside. There are some Spirographs that have teeth on the outside and they're pretty fun to play with as well. Um, the uh, design you make with a Spirograph is called a hypotrochoid and um, it has a certain number of points on it depending on what wheel you use and what ring you use. You also need to have a pencil or a pen uh, or a colored pencil or crayon whenever you make a Spirograph. The main thing is it has to be able to fit through the holes in the Spirograph you're using in the wheel. Okay, so this wheel has 30 teeth and this ring has 75. So let's look at the math to figure out how many points the hypotrochoid will have with a 30 teeth wheel, tooth wheel, and a 75 tooth ring. Before we do this, you have to know what a factor is. So if I had the number 75, okay, if I multiply any two numbers together um, to get 75, those two numbers that are multiplied together are called factors. For example, if I multiply one times 75, that equals 75. Both 1 and 75 are factors. Also, if I multiply 5 times 15 or 3 times 25, those both equal 75 as well. Oops, that's not 75. There we go. And here's a 75. Okay, so these are all factors. Factors are numbers that when you multiply them together, you get a um, multiple, okay? All right, so now that we know what a factor is, we're going to look at how many teeth are on our wheel and how many teeth are on our ring, and we're gonna do a little math with factors and figure out how many points our hypotrochoid will have. So, 75 teeth on our ring, and our wheel has 30 teeth. So, um, if I find the greatest common factor, of both 75 and 30, what that number is, it's a number that goes into both of them, and it's the biggest number that goes into both of them. So you might know that five goes into both 75 and 30 because 75 ends with a five and 30 ends with a zero. Um, you might also know that 25 goes into 75 but not 30, um, but you also might know that 15 goes into both of them. So um, 15 is actually the greatest common factor of both 75 and 30. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put 15 over here I'm gonna put this little line here. I call this the ladder method. Um, you can call it whatever you like. But um, 15 goes into 75 five times. And 15 goes into 30 two times. We don't really need that number. So if I take the greatest common factor of the wheel teeth and the ring teeth, and I find that greatest common factor, and then I divide the ring teeth by it, that'll tell me how many points our hypotrochoid will have. So when I use the 30 uh, teeth wheel on the 75 uh, teeth ring, I will get a shape that's five. All right, you ready to check it out? One thing you know, when you're making these at home, you're going to want to make sure that you hold on to your ring um, somehow, right? So I'm just gonna step on it, and I'm going to put the pencil right here in a hole inside the wheel, and I'm going to kind of push against the edge of the ring as I do this to, keep, to make the shape. So there's one turn, two, three. Oh, actually, I'm done. <laughs> That's interesting. 
All right, so let's see how many points we have on this hypotrochoid. One, two, three, four, five. The math was correct. We tried 30. Let's now try a wheel that's 40. It has 40 teeth on it and see what happens, what's different. All right, so now we still have the same teeth on our ring, but now we have a wheel with 40. Okay, so we have to think about what factors there are to go into both 75 and 40. Um, so I know that 5 goes into both of them because 75 ends in a 5 and 40 ends in a 0. So I can put a 5 right here. 5 goes in 75 15 times, yeah. And 5 goes into 8, or 40, 8 times. Okay. And so now if I look at the 15 and the 8, I can see that I can't really divide 15 and 8. There's no other factors that they share. That's how I know I'm dividing here with this picture. So if I use the 40 wheel with the 75 ring, I should get a hypotrochoid that has 15 points. So let's check it out. Okay, so this time we're going to make a hypotrochoid that uh, has two designs, one made with the, an inner uh, hole in the wheel and one made with an, the outer hole in the wheel to see how those two look. Okay, there's the inner part, and now we're going to do the outer. Okay, let's take a look at what that looks like and count how many points are on our hypotrochoid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Just like the math predicted. And this inner circle actually has fifteen points as well. They're just so close together that they almost make a circle. Okay, so let's see what happens when we use a wheel with 56 teeth now with the 75 tooth uh, ring, all right? So um, before we were using the ladder method and we were taking out common factors between the two numbers we were using. So there actually is no factor that's shared between 56 and 75. Well, there's one, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so Instead of using the uh, factor, uh, sorry, the ladder tree method, I'm going to be using the uh, factor tree. So factor tree is when you break apart a number into all the factors that make it up. So there's two types of numbers that we're going to be dealing with, prime numbers and composite numbers. A prime number is a number that can only be divided by one in itself, like the number two. Two can't be divided by anything evenly other than one in itself, too. Okay, same thing for 7 and 3 and 5, 13, 11, et cetera, right? So um, to break apart these numbers, I like to start off with an easy factor to divide out. And I know that 56 is even, so um, anything that's even is divisible by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a 2, which is a prime number. I'm going to circle that. Okay, 2 times what gives me 56? Um, it's 2 times 28. I know that quickly because, um, not because I know my 28 facts, but it's because I know half of 50 is 25 and half of six is three. I can add 25 plus three and get 28, and I cut them in half with the two. All right, 28 is still a composite number because it's even and it can be divided by one, 28, and many other numbers. Okay, so uh, since it's even, I can take out another two. And I know that two times 14 is 28, Two is a prime number, okay? And the last number I have here is 14. That's still a composite number, and I can divide that by two and seven. Once my factor trees have only prime numbers um, um, at, at, at the points, I'm finished doing my prime factorization. And um, you can see that the prime factors of 56 are two, 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 and seven, which is kind of cool. All right. Now let's take care of 75, and what we're looking for when we find the factors of 75 is any prime number that they share. That would be a common 
factor, okay? All right, so let's start off. I can't divide 75 by two because it's an odd number, but I can divide it by three. I know this for two reasons. I know that uh, if I have three quarters, um, that gives me 75 cents. I also know it because if I add the digits, seven plus five, that gives me 12. And if 12 is divisible by three, three goes into it. And 12 is divisible by three, okay. The visibility rules are fantastic to know. They make uh, working with fractions really fun. Okay, so three and 25 are both factors of 75. Three is a prime number. Now I have 25. 25 is, um, has two factors of five and five. Five times five is 25. And now you'll see that the 75 has ended um, and it has all, all of the factor trees points have ended in prime numbers. So now we're going to compare. We have two, 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 seven, our, prime, our factors of 56, and we have three, five, five, our factors of 75 that are prime, and none of them match. There's no threes over here, no fives over here, there's no twos or sevens over here. So there are no common factors that are shared between 75 and 56, except for one. It's a very special number. It's the loneliest number. It's the number one, which is a song. Okay, here we go. So if I divide one into 75, I get 75. What does this tell me? It tells me when I make a hypotrochoid with a wheel with 56 teeth and a ring with 75 teeth, I'm going to have 75 points. Let's see what it looks like. Get situated here. Now I'm not going to pick a point on the side here, like I did with the uh, 40, because that's going to be really hard. I'm going to go right here in the middle. It's easier to make the shape. And let's begin. All right, we have done it. So that took a lot longer. And you'll see that this shape has all these beautiful designs in it. And believe it or not, there's 75 of these little points. So thank you for joining me in making some spirographs today. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Um, when you're making spirographs at home, check out the math first, see if you can figure out how many points your hypotrochoid will have before you make your spirograph. And um, thank you for joining us for Steam Powered Saturday, and uh, so we'll see you next time. We want to thank the Albany Society of Engineers Foundation for their generous ongoing support of Steam Powered Saturday. Our special virtual editions are brought to you through additional support from GE Healthcare in Troy, New York, and Agora Media. We'll see you next month on Steam Powered Saturday.